Hey there guys, my name is Christopher from the Red Rising Group and welcome back to another anime video on the channel. In this anime video, we are going to be talking about an anime which received mixed reviews by the community. And this anime is none other than Arifureta from Commonwealth to World Strongest. With the second season of the Arifurata series being delayed to January 2022, I decided that it would be best to keep you guys up to date with where the series is currently at, while also covering some of the additional details that the anime decided to cut out. So, Arifurata season 1 first aired on the 8th of July 2019 and had a total of 13 episodes with 2 additional OVA episodes. And in these 13 episodes of the series, the anime actually managed to cover volumes 1 up to volume 4 of the Arifureta light novel. And this recap series will be split into 5 separate videos, with the first 2 covering volumes 1 and the remaining 3 covering volumes 2 to volumes 4. Anyways, with all that introduction out of the way, it's time to start off the video. Be sure to like and comment the video if you enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And with that all said and done, let's dive right on in into the video. First off, we have the prologue of volume 1 of the light novel, where the series first starts off at school where we see the main character of the show, Hajime Nagumo, a 17 year old high school student barely arriving to his class on time. However, unlike the rest of his classmates, Hajime is actually an otaku. Now, his otaku tendencies actually comes from his parents, with his father, Nagumo Shu, being the president of a game developing company, and his mother, Nagumo Sumire, being a popular shoujo manga artist. Not only that, but Hajime actually helps his parents out with both of their works as well, which was basically how he managed to develop his otaku personality that he has today. As seen in other anime, otakus tend to be ostracized by the rest of their classmates, which is the case with Hajime. However, he is also getting bullied by the likes of Daisuke Hiyama and his gang each day. While the fact that he is an otaku plays a massive part of him being bullied, but the main reason why this happens is because the school's most beautiful and popular girl, Kaori Shirasaki, is closely associated with him, which causes jealousy within Hiyama and the rest of his classmates, ultimately leading them to be ostracizing him. And speaking of Kaori, while she has plenty of friends within the school due to her popularity, there are three people of whom she is closest with. Shizuku Yaikashi, Koki Amanogawa, and Ryotaro Sakagami, with the two males completely against her from being close to him for separate reasons. Now, as for the reason for her sudden desire to be closer with Hajime, it might seem a bit strange to others, but the story goes as follows. One day, as she was going to the grocery store to pick up some groceries for her parents, she suddenly comes across a random thug who is trying to extort money from her grandmother and her grandchild. And much like the other passersby, she could only watch as it happens right in front of her, as she was too scared to move. And the moment she thought about calling her friends to help out, that was when Hajime took the stage. Now, instead of beating up the thug like some sort of hero, Hajime decided to prostrate himself in front of them, more commonly known in Japan as doing a dogeza. In addition to this, Hajime begins spouting a lot of misleading information, which ultimately made the thugs uncomfortable and run away. As awkward as he may be during their first encounter, Kaori thought of him as someone incredible for stepping up to the thugs when no one else did. And ever since then, Kaori was determined to be friends with him, to the point that she committed several... St 
stalkerish acts as searching him up via the internet and finding out his middle school before proceeding to wait for him directly at the school gate waiting for him to come out. Yeah, creepy, I know. Anyways, back to the main story. On that particular day during lunch break, a bright light shone underneath the classroom and the students as well as the lone teacher were engulfed in it before they woke up in a room where they were greeted by a follower of Ehit, the god of the world, who welcomes them as the heroes of the human race. He then tells them about the war taking place between the humans, demi-humans, and the demon races and asks them to participate in it. And while the students were all reluctant at first, it was only after Koki voiced out his desires of wanting to help due to his good-hearted nature that the group all decided to be a part of the war, much to their teacher's dissatisfaction. Unfortunately for our main character Hajime, his desires to have an overpowered status in a new world was ultimately destroyed when it was revealed that he was a synergist, a non-combat class who are capable of crafting items and weapons. And after spending two weeks of training, studying, and getting bullied by Hiyama and his gang, Hajime and the rest of his classmates were headed to the Orcus Labyrinth in order to train themselves against the monsters in there. However, one day before the trip to the labyrinth, as Hajime had trouble sleeping, Kaori decided to pay him a visit in his room and begs him to stay in town and to not join them in the labyrinth. The reason for this was because of a dream she had earlier on, a dream which showed him walking towards an endless darkness and with her unable to reach out to him. Because of this, Hajime tells her to protect him because of her status as a priest, and with Kaori satisfied, the two of them decided to carry on talking throughout the night until Kaori decided to head back to her room in order to prepare for their big trip to the Orcus Labyrinth. However, unknown to the both of them, someone had seen her walking into his room and left. On the day of the trip, Hajime felt someone watching him closely, but he decided to ignore it and carry on. And after going through the first 20 floors of the labyrinth, Hiyama activates a trap which sends the group to the 65th floor where they encountered a strong monster by the name of the Behemoth accompanied by Traum soldiers. Because of this, the group all struggled to handle the large number of monsters and were slowly overrun by them. And sometime during the fight, Hajime manages to save his classmate Sonobe Yuka from the Traum soldier before rushing up to Koki and telling him to help the others out while he uses his transmutation skill to trap the behemoth and give them time. After they manage to kill all the Traum soldiers and make an escape pod, Hajime quickly rushes over back to the group so that he himself would be able to escape as the behemoth slowly chased after him. However, as he was running back, a stray fireball lands right in front of him, causing him to jump back in order to avoid the attack. The attack was fired by none other than his classmate, Daisuke Hiyama, whose jealousy and hatred for Hajime led him to do such a thing. While Hajime tries to get back up and continue running, it had already been too late. The behemoth destroyed the bridge with Hajime still on it, causing him to fall down into the deep abyss below. And as he was falling down, he stared at his classmates who all could only stand in shock as it happened, while Kaori was held back by her friends screaming his name. And that is where we are going to be ending off this first part of the Ari Furetta Season 1 Recap. I'll be working on the next part immediately so please be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. And make sure to hit the notifications bell so that you'll never miss a video from this channel. Also, be sure to like the video and comment down below on how you think Season 2 will turn out. 
And with that all said and done, it's time to end the video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll be seeing you all in the next video. Bye guys!